ourselves of what we have lived together as this community of learners. We have asked Courtney Morin, one of our graduate award recipients, to come up and share some of her insights with us. Courtney? Good afternoon, everyone. I'm so glad that you all could be with us today as we celebrate and culminate six years of hard work. Way back at the beginning of these six years, during my seventh grade oral, I reflected on the immense suffering I had witnessed in Africa earlier in my seventh grade year. This suffering, particularly the hunger I had seen, had shaken me, and I said as much. When I recalled aloud how many people I had met did not even know when their next meal would be, my examiner put this question to me. She asked, what do you think we ought to do about that? This simple but seemingly unassailable question launched the two of us into a discussion about potential solutions to the issue of world hunger. Some might say that such a question is way too big for a 13-year-old, and in a way, they would be right. I did not, in fact, solve the problem of world hunger during my seventh grade oral. But in choosing to grapple with an ostensibly impossible question, despite my inability to answer it, the way I saw the world changed. Suddenly, even the impossible was possible if I strove to be more than I could be. I realize that being more than you can be sounds like a contradiction, but bear with me while I explain. First, how does one even go about accomplishing the impossible? In the words of Hegel, one of the philosophers we read this spring, nothing great in the world has been accomplished without passion. Those people who do great things seem almost always to burn with great zeal for the things they do. Daily, we see a multitude of passionate people accomplishing incredible things. We are surrounded by family who love to work and play, friends who live to build the kingdom of God, and teachers who strive to learn and to teach, and numerous other role models whose zeal awes us. Only a few weeks back, we at Trinity School were given a glimpse into the life of the current governor of Indiana who visited our school and spoke about a cherished love for this state, describing with enthusiasm how every day when he wakes up in the morning, he is struck all over again with his great love for the people for whom he works. Accomplishment through passion is not a new phenomenon. For centuries, man has seen a correlation between passion and progress. As part of Ninth Grade Humane Letters, we read about historical figures like the Founding Fathers, Hamilton, Madison, Jay, Washington, who seemed to burn with zeal for creating a free and independent America, and civil rights leaders like Abraham Lincoln, Martin Luther King Jr., and Rosa Parks, whose zeal for freedom and equality allowed for their incredible and impossible actions. We are all familiar with humanity's self-made servants, like Mother Teresa, whose work showed an obvious love for their fellows. Whether their passion stemmed from conviction or from love, in each case, passion drove these individuals to accomplish acts which I might have deemed impossible until they achieved them. I heard a story once about how hundreds of people were flocking to Calcutta to work by Mother Teresa's side because they were so inspired by all of the incredible things she was accomplishing. However, Mother Teresa did not accept the help of so many extra hands, even though it would inevitably have made her work easier and more fruitful. Rather, 
she sent the people who had come to her to go out and find their own Calcuttas. She said to them, you can find Calcutta all over the world if you have the eyes to see. Here, Mother Teresa was telling the people that they were not made to do the work that she was passionate about. Instead, they needed to find work that touched their own hearts. They needed to find their own Calcuttas because it is only through doing what one loves and feels called to do that one can accomplish anything great in the world. As put by Howard Thurman, an author, professor, and famous African-American civil rights advocate, don't ask yourself what the world needs. Ask yourself what makes you come alive, and then go and do that. Because what the world needs is people who have come alive. In Thurman's words, we see there is a second element to accomplishing the impossible in the world. Hegel and Thurman both agree that passion, or coming alive, is an essential part of progress. But Thurman indicates that we must also transfer this passion into action if we want to change the world. Having discovered passions that vitalize us, we have a decision to make. The choice between being active and being passive. Passion is the foundation of accomplishing the impossible, but nothing can be built upon this foundation without a conscious decision to respond to our passions with action, to strive beyond our capabilities. And so we come to the third part of the puzzle of being more than you can be. Initially, this seems impossible, for it seems that a person's highest potential is to be the best version of what one can be. This, we have said, is to act upon one's passion. However, Fyodor Dostoevsky says in The Brothers Karamazov that all is like an ocean. All flows and connects. Touch it in one place, and it echoes at the other end of the world. The truth that Dostoevsky points to here is both the reason that we are able to be more than we can be and the reason that you and I can achieve the impossible. When you are impassioned and act in your zeal, in an effort to accomplish something beyond your own capability, your actions affect those around you. Your passion inspires others. It causes others to consider their own lives and how they spend their own passions. As seen in the story of Mother Teresa, Mother Teresa's zeal for loving the poor attracted the attention of many. It caused curious and inspired individuals to come to her and then to return home to determine which things gave them joy and satisfaction. Mother Teresa's actions beyond ensuring the care of many poor Indian citizens, fostered in numerous others a desire to make a difference in the world. Mother Teresa was more than she could be because she was more than her own actions. Her actions went beyond the works of her own hands to encompass the work of an entire flock of followers. What Mother Teresa could be was a single person devoted to caring for her fellows. What she became was a community of people who were driven to use their passions to actively improve the world. So she accomplished the impossible. In the same way, the teacher working with me during my seventh grade oral had a lasting impact on me, and hopefully through me on the world. Her passions for teaching, for thinking and discussing and for loving the world changed me. She asked me what I was going to do about the things in the world that troubled my heart. And as a result, I have discovered a new way of thinking and of living. I have discovered how to be more than I can be by inspiring others to action through my own work. I have discovered that I can achieve what seemed impossible by choosing to act around those things which move my own heart. I have discovered that nothing is too big with the help of a community, and that nothing with relentless passion 
and courageous action is impossible. Looking at this year's senior class, one cannot miss the passion present. Our class contains individuals who love the earth, who love mathematics, and who love science, who love art and culture and language, who love law, who love peace, who love people, who love travel and music and medicine, mechanics, architecture, politics, history and literature, animals, teaching, acting, sports, philosophy, technology, and a whole list of other things. Certainly, we have enough passion to accomplish incredible and impossible things, rippling to the other end of the world, if only we strive to be more than we can be. In the words of Anna Frank, how wonderful it is that nobody need wait a single moment before starting to improve the world. Throughout our time at Trinity, we have been asked to answer and to do the impossible many times over. From seventh grade, when I was asked to put my mind to solving the problem of world hunger, to this year, when we turned our efforts to understanding quantum mechanics quantum physics, and to discussing whether justice or mercy is more fundamental to human life. Trinity School has guided us and prepared us to build the kingdom of God upon the passion discovered here. So, on behalf of the class of 2014, I would like to thank you, the faculty, for showing us the world and for empowering us to make a difference in it. I also want to thank you, our parents, for providing us with a Trinity education. And I want to thank everyone here today for supporting us and for believing in us. Finally, my dear friends and classmates, I want to tell you the truth, that we are empowered and that we are needed to accomplish the impossible in the world. We can and we must find and use our passions to create a world that is more than we ever thought it could be. So, as I was asked in seventh grade, I ask you, what are you going to do about the things that move you in the world? <laughs>